Hi, and welcome to Best in Tesla. So, this is it. Tesla has finally just released the version 12 full self-driving neural network to the first public testers. This is huge, as this should be the version that gets to full self-driving. Driving. We of course need more iterations of the software, so version 12.2.3 and so on, but it will be on this architecture they have now. Neural network in, controls out. So if Tesla will ever solve full self driving, well, this is it. So that is such a huge deal that Tesla is now starting to slowly roll it out to the public. And the first couple of test drives are quite promising. So, while more and more are throwing in the towel on autonomous driving, Tesla is about to hit the accelerator, with everything put in place to hit that exponential learning curve of their neural network. So, let's check it all out and let's dive right in. So, Tesla has released the version 12 to the public testers. So Tesla is advancing on their full self-driving system at the same time so many others are starting to give up. As Cruise has stopped their operation in San Francisco because of the accident they had where a pedestrian got stuck underneath the car. So that is of course not very good, but last week we learned that GM is now also going to drop their Ultra Cruise, the automaker's next generation semi-autonomous driving assist system, and refocus on their less capable Super Cruise, their drive assist features. Ultra Cruise was announced in 2021 as the next evolution of GM's Super Cruise system, offering hand-free driving capabilities. But as so many other adventures in this space, it has seen some big setbacks and is being cancelled. Just like Ford and Volkswagen also made a partnership back in July of 2019 that they would invest together in Argo AI to make robotaxis and full self-driving cars, but in October 2022 they shut that company down, as the company has found that developing full self-driving cars is incredibly expensive. <laughs> Ford said it would take a $2.7 billion loss in its investment in Arco AI. Yes, Tesla is really, truly the only one that is making full self-driving in a way it makes sense and is financially feasible as Tesla sells the cars to the customers and earn money on that, and then the customers can pay Tesla even more money to get access to the full self-driving software, and then their customers and fleet of vehicles are training their neural network to drive the car. And when Tesla solve it, we don't have to wait for Tesla to get a scale of production because they are already at scale of production, as their cars they produce today will be able to drive themselves. So when they solve it 100%, it is basically only a question of how many cars will they divert to become robotaxis and how many will they continue to sell to customers. And because Tesla has a fleet of more than 5 million cars collecting data for them, Tesla has a completely unassailable lead in data collection. And on top of that, Tesla already has an in-house made Dojo supercomputer made specifically to train a neural network on video data. So Tesla can also use all all that data they're collecting like no other. In my opinion, there is really no catching Tesla, as no one else is taking this approach that is not financial suicide, and not working on general solution, and don't have the production at scale ready. No one is where Tesla is at today. And why, we also heard Ford say when they shut down Argo AI, the company is still optimistic about the future of full self-driving cars, but Profitable, fully autonomous vehicles at scale are a long way off. Yes, in, in the way they were developing it, yes it was, but not the way Tesla is doing it. But Jim Farley continued, and we won't necessarily have to create the technology 
ourselves. Hmm. And since Ford was the first to make a partnership with Tesla to get access to the North American charging standard, I don't think it is far stretched to think that Ford is also going to license Tesla's full self-driving software when it is ready. But we have to wait and see and see what happens. But for Ford to say they don't have to develop it themselves is um, quite telling. But all in all, there has been a lot of noise from the big boys through the years, and they had even convinced some people that what they were doing was the right way to autonomy. As we can see in this chart from Guidehouse Inside, that you all probably have seen before, that Argo AI was one of the absolute leaders in this space. <laughs> I would love to know on what matrix they had them up there in front, other than they were Ford and Volkswagen, as we have talked about this chart before and how absurd it is. And now here we are, and Argo AI is no more. And Cruz, which is also one of the leaders apparently according to Guidehouse, has now stopped its operation. So when they were this wrong on the so-called leaders, is there a chance that Guidehouse doesn't really know what they're talking about here and also are wrong about having Tesla dead last as a follower to everyone else? <laughs> When we now see Tesla's version 12, a public version being tested by Homer's catalog and a handful of other beta testers outside Tesla's 15,000 employees that got access, and we can see it can easily drive all on its own through a city like San Francisco, where it even had fire trucks in the way, pedestrian, bicycles, dogs, and much, much more, and had to make all kinds of difficult maneuvers, but handled it with flying colors. We can really see what Tesla's system is capable of. They truly have full self-driving cars. They just still make mistakes sometimes, and that has to be eliminated, of course, but that is only a question of when, not if, in my opinion and makes this chart from Guidehouse a historical chart of bad research. And Homer's catalogs said that the car also drew much more like a human, and there were so many small improvements over version 11 that this was easily the biggest release of Tesla's full self-driving software ever. It now doesn't only drive to the destination, but when it gets there, it finds a place to pull over as well, and then you can just tell it to go somewhere else. It is still in beta as Tesla is slowly and safely rolling it out to more and more customers. But Elon has said that version 12 will get out of beta and just be available for full self-driving software owners in the US to begin with, of course, but I personally think this is a huge deal because there is no one else that has this level of full self-driving capabilities. And remember, this is in a privately owned vehicle. This is insane because when Tesla takes this out of beta, everyone that buys a Tesla can get access to this software or this AI and it will be able to drive you from LA to New York. You will still have to keep an eye on it and be ready to take over, but as Homemark has just shown us, it really can drive all by itself through traffic in San Francisco. So to drive across the country on highways should really not be a big problem. But the point is that Tesla's neural network will be able to drive everywhere not just in a little geofenced area of a city, because we still have Waymo that is doing autonomous driving already, but that is in a geofenced area. It's really not the same thing. So what Tesla has just released to a few in the public is something no one else has. And people will start to see what Guidehouse little chart here that so many short sellers and haters has been clinging to was completely wrong. The public will start to realize just how far ahead Tesla really is. And this is so important for Tesla. Firstly, I do believe this is the final version of the build. Sure, there will be more iterations of the version 12, like version 12.2 and 3 and so on, but Tesla has the groundwork, the architecture down. Tesla has literally created an AI vision, a neural network that can see the world. Now they just need to teach it to understand the world. And I know I have been optimistic about this before in the past, just like Elon, but I personally think 2024 is going to be the year that Tesla finally solves it. 
as the chess pieces have been set in place. Not just the neural network and its vision, but Tesla has also over 5 million cars collecting data. Tesla has about 500,000 beta testers, something like that. It's been a while since we got the last update on the numbers of beta testers, but we are talking about hundreds of thousands testing out the latest version of Tesla software, where Waymo has said that it has a permit to operate 250 robo-taxis in San Francisco. So Waymo is doing pretty well, but we can't really compare Tesla and Waymo as Tesla is just a completely different level when it comes to scale. What Waymo has collected of data from miles driven in their entire existence, Tesla collects every seven days on their beta testers alone and even more data from their entire fleet when they drive in shadow mode. This is not competition to what Tesla is doing. In 10 years, we might have way more taxis in many other cities around the US, but they need to map the whole area out where they need to drive. This is a very slow process that will take decades to build out, and they will never get to a general solution because of this. And this solution doesn't really scale. So while Tesla will be able to drive everywhere, Waymo will only be able to drive in their little mapped areas. And Waymo's solution is not ready for scale either. So even if they solved it tomorrow, it would take years for them to get any kind of scale and would cost them billions of dollars, as their autonomous cars cost at least $250,000 with all the sensors and stuff they have in them. Whereas Tesla can build a Model 3 for about $30,000. So again, here is really no competition between the two, as Tesla's solution is more than eight times cheaper to build. And Tesla does not use LiDAR, which is very expensive, but more importantly, we do not produce enough LiDAR system for vehicles in the world to build like 1 million full self-driving cars. We only have a fraction of that. We simply do not have the supply of LiDAR for autonomous vehicles, as Brian from The Next Big Future has explained to us before, as no one is making the orders for a million LiDAR vehicles, because no one has solved it yet. And remember, even someone like Neo is now throwing away LiDAR for pure vision instead, just like Tesla. So what Elon said is starting to come true. LiDAR is a fool's errand and anyone relying on LiDAR is doomed. So no one else is ready at scale, but Tesla is, and for a fraction of the price of anyone else. So how do you compete when your product is inferior as it cannot drive everywhere, but it costs 10 times more to produce. This is not even a race, as there is basically no one else that has Tesla's full package. It's a race with one driver. And secondly, why this is so huge is that this is a huge potential for Tesla even before it becomes robotaxis. Because when this gets released to the public out of beta, I think so many people are going to want this software. Also, people that have already bought a Tesla but didn't buy the software before are going to want to get the full self-driving software now and pay Tesla another $12,000. So even just when it's released to the public as something you still need to keep an eye on, it could very well bring in billions in pretty much pure profits for Tesla. To help Tesla offset some of all the price cuts they have done through the last year, and this could very well, by the end of this year, bring in a big surprise for Wall Street as Tesla profits are suddenly not shrinking anymore. Also because Tesla has yet another thing no one else has, and that is the reason why I'm so bullish for 2024, and that is Dojo. Tesla is collecting more data than ever before, and in an order of magnitude more than anyone else combined, but now they are also able to use all of that data, teaching the neural network even faster with Dojo. This was what I thought would happen in 2023, but Dojo took longer than I anticipated. But now Tesla has it up and running and should be in the top five in the entire world of supercomputers by now and have 10 x its compute power since July of last year. And by the end of this year or in October, it should be three times faster yet again. So Tesla's exponential growth in fleet size, which gives exponential growth in their data collection, with the exponential growth of the compute power, will give the AI an exponential learning curve now. And that is why I personally think we will see Tesla has solved this by the end of the year. Thanks for their version 12 of this software. 
And when they do, they don't even have to start the production of new robotaxis to get a fleet of robotaxis going and test it out, because Tesla does lease out their cars as well, but no one is allowed to buy their cars after the lease. Tesla wants those cars back, and Tesla has over 140,000 cars in their lease fleet. So every year Tesla get these three-year-old cars back, so Tesla already have a little fleet of old cars they can just deploy when they get the go-ahead to test the fully autonomous driving out in probably something like San Francisco. They don't even need to spend one dollar to get this going. So Tesla just has so many advantages over everyone else and seems to have all the things in place, with the cars being controlled by 100% neural network, which means they will no longer hit that local maximum. It is only about getting enough data through the system, and Tesla has set themselves up to be able to do exactly that here in 2024. And at the same time, we're seeing more and more of the old legacy automakers throwing in the towel on full self-driving. But Tesla is accelerating. So the Tesla version 12 is definitely something to keep an eye on, because this is it. If Tesla solves full self-driving, it will be on this version. Neural network in, controls out. So buckle up, because 2024 is shaping up to be a year for the history books. Oh, here we go. Dan O'Dowd's worst nightmare. Or uh, Dan O'Dowd's fantasy. Well, his fantasy is that I run all these kids over, but it looks like it's actually stopping for them. Uh-oh. What are you going to do, Dan? It's detecting kids. And thank you for watching. And until next time, take care out there and be nice.